Welcome back everybody to craftingonabudgetstore.com. Today we are using the amazing Minte um, paper collection that I wanted to use for um, some of my Christmas projects. This is available in May's shop. I did a complete walkthrough of all of this. It's called Time of Wonders. And so if you haven't seen that walkthrough, I would highly suggest you go look at it because I don't think you're going to want to miss out on this collection. We are going to do a couple different projects with this. I did get the 12 by 12 pad and the 6 by 6 pad. Today we're going to be working with the 6 by 6 paper. I've prepped a lot because we'd have like about 20 videos if I didn't. Um, so you've all probably seen how to put this together but i'm gonna just explain it to you i've already started some of it um what i've done is i know that my pages are going to be six and a quarter by six and a quarter and i know that because i'm going to mat them with the six by six pad so i knew that my covers had to be bigger my covers are six and a half by six and a half, the chipboard pieces. And then the spine is three inches by six and a half. And all I've done is taken two eight and a half by 11 papers. And on the 11 inch side, I've run a piece of score tape. You probably can't see it, but I did run a piece of score tape down the middle to make it longer. So I didn't have to go through a 12 by 12 piece. And let me just zoom you out a little bit so you can see it a little bit better. Okay. Um, so you would put those together and then I just trimmed around. I cut my corners here so that it would be easier to fold. Um, so now what I'm doing is just prepping my cover. So let's do this first. And what I like to do is I like to stand my cover up. I really play with it a lot because I want it to be very flexible. Now, some people use Tyvek. Um, I can honestly say that I've done so many books and some I've used it, some I haven't, and honestly, they're, they're all fine. So um, that's entirely up to you what you want to do. Um, but for this, I'm not using Tyvek on anything. So what I'm going to do is start by taking the long sides off. So I'm going to take my little pokey tool here because it's so much easier to get these strips off. And then I'm going to bring this up nice and neat. And it doesn't matter if it's uneven because this is all going to get covered. So I'm just running my bone folder across it to give it a good, give it a good push there. And then I like to go across the top a little bit, not too rough because you don't want to rough up your paper. Um, I always do the long sides first. Just a personal preference for me. Um, but you can do how, but however you would like. See that one doesn't want to come up. Here we go. All right. This is going to be such a cute book, guys. Oh my gosh. Wait, you see the pages. I prep, I didn't do them, but I have them all prepped and ready to go so that we can just glue and do. All right, and again, I'm just going to, you know, I might probably, I want to use my Teflon bone folder for this. I think it's a little bit nicer. It smooths it out better. And I'm not worrying about these spaces. And I did put, I don't know, like an eighth of an inch between there, but I'm not, I'm not pressing these down yet. Now, what you have to do for these, let me put it down there. All right, come on. I like to fold in 
a little bit of the uh, corner, like push it in so that you don't see anything. So I just fold that in a little bit and then I'm going to pull this around. Again, I'm not worrying about that a little bit shows here because I'm going to be covering this so it's not going to matter. I gave myself a little bit more room on this side, I see. Let's see there, push that in. I'm just pushing these little corners in before I lay this down. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to get to the pages. To me, this part I can't stand doing. This part is my least favorite part of the whole book. <laughs> it's this. It's so tedious. Okay. All right. So now what I'm going to do is where I have the folds, the that one eighth gap, I'm gently scoring there so that I can bring it up. But see, I'm not like being rough with it yet because I don't want to do that. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And there we go. Okay. There's our cover. Look at that. Pretty fast. And you could decide which side you like better. Like I don't like this little lumpy part here. So I'll use probably this side as my front. But again, it doesn't matter. I don't know what happened there. I must have pushed it in too far. Um, but I'm going to cover it, so I'm not really going to worry about it. So this is our cute little cover. Next, we have to make the hinge mechanism. And the hinge mechanism is what's going to hold our papers in this book. And to do that, all right, we went over the chipboard covers. Let me just reiterate the chipboard covers. You have two at six and a half by six and a half and one at three inches by six and a half. Now our hinge is six and a quarter wide by 12 inches long. And on the 12 inch side, you're going to do a lot of scoring. So I'm going to go slow. You're going to score at two two and three quarters, three and a half, four and a quarter, five, five and three quarters, six and a half, seven and a quarter, eight, eight and three quarters, nine and a half, and ten and a quarter. And what's that going to, what that allows you to do, like before, it will look like this before you start folding it. Once you have it all laid out and scored, you're going to prep your score. So I just go down the line and go on both sides just to make sure they are flexible on either side because these are going to be the hinges. And then you're going to skip this big piece. And then the next piece you're going to pull together and see how that makes one hinge there. Okay. Now I already have tape on my hinges to make it easier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this off. Okay. So now I have one hinge. Then you're going to skip one and you're going to make another hinge. Easy peasy. Very easy to do. This is not difficult at all. And there are so many videos of different bindings, but we're doing this specifically for this book. Okay, so here we have one. Now we're going to skip one. We're going to pull the other two together. And there's our third hinge for our third page. And then we're going to skip one more. Pinch these two together. And now we have our four hinges. Okay. All right. So 
so we got that all done. Now next you've noticed that I've added tape to either side of the hinges and that is so that when we put our pages in it will stick to either side. Now what I do want to do is I like to clip these in. Oh, almost used the fabric scissors. <sighs> fabric scissors police are going to come and get me. All right, so this is what you want to do. Just angle it in a tiny bit on each hinge. It just makes the page go on so much better. It just it's, it takes the stress out of the hinge. Of, of getting your piece on now you don't have to do this if you don't want but I I like to do this because I think it it just is so much easier when I'm putting the pages in so and you'll see when I'm done what it looks like all I've done is taken a little bit off of each hinge see tiny tiny bit Make sure my autofocus is off. Okay, good. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to cover this with either glue, tape, a combination of the both, whatever you think is going to work good for you. Now, I happen to have this really big, wide score tape that I got for another project. And May can order this. It's by Elizabeth Craft. And so I think I'm going to use... First, I'm just going to flatten this out. Move this out of the way. I'm going to flatten this out, and I am going to use some of this tape because I think because it's wider, I'm not going to be wasting all my other score tape. So, again, if you don't have a really wide tape like this, not a problem. Just use your score tape or use. Fabri-Tac works really good. Okay, but see, I couldn't prep this ahead because of the fact that I wanted you guys to see how to put together the hinge. So, this, this thing, though, is hard to maneuver in your arm. I will tell you that because it's so big. Let's see, I'm just kind of cutting it. This is not kind of, this tape is really hard to tear. And I do have a, a thin piece left from another project. So I'm just going to use that one here. And what I am going to do is I am going to add a little bit of art glitter glue onto this as well. Because the art glitter glue is going to give us a little bit of time. Oh, that's going to bother me so much, guys. But there's nothing I could do about it now. So, but by the time we have all our pages in, I don't think it's going to be so noticeable. I was a little overzealous on that, but that's okay. Um, all right. So the art glitter glue is just going to give us a little bit of time when you're putting this on here because the tape sticks instantly so when you add the glue it just gives us a little bit of wiggle room so that we can get it on there and not have any drama so let me take my tape off let's see if I can get it in there okay Sometimes you got to push it down first before you can pull it off. There we go. All right. And then we're going to take this one. Woo! Sticky, as you can see. Um, I go around and I just feel like if I have any hangover tape, I pull it onto itself on the sides. And now we're just going to add, I notice here, there's a, definitely a gap of no tape. Um, but I'm just adding 
a little bit just to give me that wiggle room. So that I can place this nicely. Okay, and this is going to go. I like to push my hinges so I could see. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get my hinges in the middle, in the middle of the piece there. And I may have to do this on top. I may have to do this over your heads. I think that's good. And then I like to have a little room on both sides. I just want to make sure that my hinges are within that. There we go. Within that three inch piece. Because we want our paper, our pages to be secure on the spine. So now I'm just running my bone folder across. Have a little bit of seepage of glue, but that's okay. Oh, that's from the tag. All right. So there we go. So now we have our hinges in. And I guess what we can do is get two black pieces of cardstock just to cover the rest of this. So let me just measure this. That is one thing I didn't do. This ruler... I'm telling you guys, this ruler drives me insane. It's got markings on both sides and I'm always twisting it. Um, so I'm going to, what I'm going to do first of all is I want to, first of all, I'm going to close my glue so we don't have drama with that. And then I want to take my bone folder and I want to carefully find where that creases that we made and I'm just going over it little by little just working the paper into that crease because I want to be able to put my cover up there we go nice nice and easy and then we're going to do the same thing on this side we're going to look for where that crease is we're going to run our bone folder up and down it you don't want to push too hard because you don't want to crack your paper and there we go all right so there we have that all right so now let's figure out what size paper we need for this this is six and a half so let's do six and two six and three eighths by six and three eighths two of those i'm going to need let me write that down all right six and three eighths by six and three eighths will be the inside and outside covers to just cover that completely and we'll use glue for that now i don't think i have a paper I don't have any paper that size, so I am going to have to use two pieces of paper. So hold on one second. I did get a new blade in my paper trimmer, so I'm very happy about that. Uh, this is what I can't stand about these. I want a paper trimmer that is going to have all the markings across it easy right without that slide out arm so i'm going to mark it on my paper here because um and i said six and three eighths so it's almost six so i'm going to just make a little pencil mark there and do it because It's so hard to figure it out when you pull out that arm on this six and three eighths. And then here we go again. And then the other one, I'll just trace. I won't use the ruler. I'll just trace on. 
plus six in one, two, three. Just putting a light pencil mark there. Whoa. Whoa. All right. So pull that down. And my pencil mark go. There it is. Eights. Let me see. Yeah, that would be perfect. What I'm going to do here, just so that they're, in case I missed a measurement, I'm going to use this as my guide for the next cuts that I'm going to make. And then we're going to set it aside and work on the pages. Let's see. Oh, it's doing good. We're only 20 minutes into it. So that's great. I'm trying not to make them too long. This is going to be long. I'm just, um, I'm just going to tell you right now. It's going to be long because we're going to get some stuff done, but we're going to want to embellish it, and you know, so this is not going to be a quick project. That's why I did a lot of the prep ahead of time. Okay, let's just move some of this stuff off my desk. All right. And then let's add these pieces, and that way everything is nice and clean. Good. Press it down. And then we're going to do the same. And remember, this glue does dry clear. So if you see any on an edge or whatever, don't be bothered by it because it does dry clear. And then we're going to set this aside. Well, no, you know what we'll do? We'll mat it. That way, that part's all done. And then we can move forward. Let me see how I am, guys. I have a whole little system here. Now, I did want to talk a little bit about why I chose black. Because I don't usually work with black. Anybody that knows me knows I'm not really a black person. But this... This black made the pages just pop from this line. I did try it with craft, thinking maybe craft color might be better. I thought maybe white, but honestly, the best was the black. So I'm just being mindful of what my cover is. This is my cover. So my front I should say so let's now add our I'm done with that oh, okay so now let's add our mats to this now I did have to go into the 12 by 12 pack for the mats so this is what happens um, so I'm gonna have this on one one side this on the other side and I'm going to have this here, okay? And these measure, do those measure, six and a quarter by six and a quarter, these do. And then this measures two and seven eighths by six and a quarter. And then I have my other little Virgo, okay? That's not it. All right, guys. I do have a piece. These are going to go on like this. And then I have a piece for here. But where did it go? Maybe I 
put it over here. checking my garbage, but it's not in there. It's not underneath there. Well, let's glue these on, and then hopefully the other piece will turn up. Again, I'm just using the art glitter glue. Oh, very important. We have to add our seam binding if you want a closure which I do. So before we put our final mat on, which is the six by six, we're going to add our seam binding. I'm going to show you that in a minute. I can't believe, where could that have gone to? Oh my goodness. It's crazy. It'll show up. Okay. This one here. And then let's get this one going. I don't believe I can't find this the mat for this. It's so weird. Oh. Okay. That looks really pretty. Right. I don't want to have to tear apart my whole desk while we're live. I just don't understand where that piece went. Just give me a second, guys. All right. All right. I think it's stuck. I thought maybe it got stuck within these pages, but it didn't. Hmm. I really want to proceed with that piece. No. It has to be with these scraps then. It has to have gotten mixed in here, but I don't see it. Ha, ha, ha. There we go. <laughs> All right. Crisis averted. I knew it had to be somewhere. Um, for some reason, I like my spine to not have as much border around it. So I'll give you the measurements that I'm using. Um, and then you decide what works best for you. But for my mats, we have the six and a quarter by six and a quarter, the two and seven eighths by six and a quarter. And then we have these that are going on top. These are six by six. And this is two and three eighths by six. Okay. So let me get my seam binding, which I'm going to use pink and you can get this now in May shop. I'm so very excited because everything is better with seam binding. Oh my gosh, everything's better with seam binding. Um, ooh, I'm gonna step around, guys. Um, I'm just gonna cut that little edge off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna guesstimate, and I want two pieces of ribbon, and these are probably gonna get cut down, but I'm gonna make them long, for now. So I'm going to need four pieces of the same 
size because I want like a double bow. And then you'll see what, how we're going to do this. And this should give me, this should give me more than enough to make a double bow. Okay. Um, these pieces are, I'll give you an estimate, 12, Whoop. slippery, 12. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, about seventeen inches long, and you're gonna need four of them. And again, I may have overestimated, but I don't like to be wrong. <laughs> I like to get my seam binding right. All right, I'm just gonna glue this because this isn't gonna get any seam binding, so I'm just gonna glue this center here. All right, and I think I'm going to use a little tape for the seam binding. And this is what I'm going to do. I know that I'm going to just guesstimate the middle. Uh, I, guys, I don't really, I'm not one for exact measurements. So I'm just putting two pieces of tape here, but I'm not going all the way to the edge because my mat has to cover that. Oh my gosh, I'm getting so many calls that are spam. All right, and then I'm just going to put one piece here, and I'm going to put the next piece on top of the tape here. Okay, so there's my two, two ribbons that I'm going to use, and now I'm going to come in and glue down my cover. I'm going to make sure that my edges are really good. And that's why I love this art glitter glue with this tip. I mean, you could draw your name. You could write with it. It's, it's amazing. Okay. And then here, I'm going to center it as best as I can. And this glue will also lock in that seam binding. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to need a ruler. I don't think this is going to go all the way to the end. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm just, see what I'm doing guys? I'm just flipping my ribbon over to see where I need to put my tape. Remember, we used a little bit over here and put some here. All right. Okay. Let me take this tape off. Glue this in here. This one right next to it. So now they're even on both sides. You could go check if you wanted to, but they're even. And then I'm going to glue my final mat on top here. Just want to make sure my ribbons are a little separate. Okay. So this is good. We're getting there. Leave your seam binding out because we're going to use it in the book. This doesn't have a... Maybe it goes like that. Mm, no. I think it goes like this. <laughs> All right, and then I'm going to just center this on this edge here. 
Okay. And now everything is glued down nice. Our covers are done for the most part. We're probably going to add stuff to them. Um, and our we have our ties and our hinges are in the book. So now you can set this aside because we're not going to be using that right now. And we're going to work on our pages. And this is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. And I don't know if I should stop the video here and make a new video. Hmm. Or if we should just continue on. That is the big question. What was what would be easier for you guys? I'm trying to think of how it would be easier for you guys. I think I'm going to stop this video and just start over for the pages.